Thank you for those lovely words, Gary. And uh, Gary returned the favour he taught me. Um, I'd like to start with a few comments uh, while someone comes and finds my slides. They've got to be here somewhere. I don't really need slides, but Karen, while I just yabber, can you find them for me? So um, I, I am privileged to look after a lot of young adults, teenagers and young adults who've had a Fontan circulation. And I'd like to make three general observations about it. One is, thank you very much. Um, one is that they're really well. It's not that nothing ever goes wrong, but one of my patients recently won the New South Wales State Surfing Championship for 17 to 20 year olds. Uh, another is a little hungover today because last night he celebrated his 50th birthday, not 15th birthday, but 50th birthday. And there's been a road bump or two along the way, but he is, is and remains remarkably well. And I've been privileged to look after a number of young women who have had healthy pregnancies. Um, some of them have had their babies a little bit early. Some of them have got a little bit breathless or a migraine or two in the pregnancy. But by and large, they've done incredibly well. The second general point I want to make is that I can only imagine if you've got a child with a Fontan circulation and you've come to know and respect and develop a deep relationship with the cardiologist that's looked after your child or if you're the child with your own cardiologist and with your cardiac surgeon. And the whole prospect of crossing the great divide from childhood to adolescence to adult life and going to a different hospital, meeting different people that you've never met before whose names you can't remember or can't even spell if it's my name, um, is a very daunting prospect. And I really want you all to know that we are here for you. There is an enormous system in every state of Australia of nurses, doctors, psychologists, social workers who do this job because they genuinely care about you um, and, and without meaning to be even a tiny bit patronising, we admire people with a Fontan circulation. Life is tough enough with two pumps. Uh, it's a little bit tougher with one pump and we are here to help people not just with their medical problems but we spend a lot of time trying to help people with issues around jobs, around sports, um, filling in forms for all the things that need to be filled in as you progress through life with any kind of health problem. So please be reassured that there is a system in place for children and young adults as they go through their whole of life journey, which as you've heard can be 50 plus years and we only don't know that it's not more than 50 years because the first one was done in 1971. And so there aren't too many people who are over 50 years, but we're hopeful. Um, there is, however, a small obligation on you guys. Our obligation is to provide the best care we can in a safe and protective environment that you find supportive. But the obligation on you is there are, there are three obligations. One is come along. Um, we know from a lot of research all over the world that of 100 Fontan kids who are between 10 and 12, about 30 of them will drop out of regular medical surveillance during the transition to adulthood. And there are a whole lot of reasons for that. It's a time you don't want to know that you've got a health problem. It's a time when you're a bit rebellious, perhaps. It's a time where you don't care about what happens because there's so much other stuff happening in your life apart from your heart disease. But our plea is probably the most important thing I'm going to say today is come along. It's frightening to come and see a doctor because what, what's the doctor going to say? Everything's all right? Well, I didn't need to come to hear everything's all right or something's wrong and I'm frightened of that. But if you come along and we find something that's wrong early on, we can fix it before it becomes a big problem and that's why we want people to come along. The second is when you do come along, please tell us what your concerns are. I'm always surprised there are people who I think are doing super well but there's something at the back of their mind, there's something that's bothering them, something that, that maybe they think we're too busy or don't care or it's too trivial for them. But if you have an appointment with your specialist or your child does, write down the one or two things before you come in that you're really concerned about. Please tell us. And the third obligation, particularly to those parents in the audience, is have a little think about how you and your child are going to manage the transition process of them taking more responsibility for their own condition. 
Um, when I see a young adult or a teenager for the first time with a Fontan circulation, I, I love the parents to be there. I need the parents to be there. They're, so, they're devoted much of their lives to the care of those children. They have the history. They have the memory. But in paediatric life, a lot of the talking has been between the doctor and the parent. I like to spend the first 20 or 25 minutes with everyone in the room, but then I always politely ask the parents if they'd give us a moment alone so I can establish a relationship with the young person. And that's a hard process to manage. It's hard for the young person to be without their parents. It's hard for their parent to be without the young person. Um, and everyone does it a little bit differently. But my plea is lend it some thought before it happens. And let them go when it's the right time to let them go, a little bit. Um, the third general point I want to make is about research. Because we, we talk a lot about research. That's what we spend a lot of our lives doing. But I want to give you some practical examples because it's not. A, I think everyone knows that out there in the ether, research is a good thing, but why? And I want to give you examples of three things that have come out of the registry, really practical as why this research is so important. And we talk about it so much and we so appreciate your participation. The, the first is when Eve and many other people published this enormously important paper in the American literature last year about the long-term survival of Fontans, we might say, well, it's good to know, but can we change it? The answer is the way the paper was presented, it took the three different kinds of operation that Professor Winlaw described for you in the first talk today, and it compared the survival between them, and one or two of them are better than one or two of the others. That feeds back to the international community all over the world who say, OK, we're going to stop doing Operation A, and we're all going to do Operation B, because Professor Dudekem and his team in Australia and New Zealand have found that Operation B works much better. So it's a very practical way of disseminating I mean, what can be more important information than that. A second piece of work that's recently come out of the registry is a survey of what's happened to pregnancies. I said to you earlier, I've looked after many women who've had successful pregnancies. But it's only when you put my patients together with the patients from Melbourne and Brisbane and Adelaide and Western Australia and Auckland and Christchurch, and you get a big series. And so when someone comes to any of us and says, we're thinking about a pregnancy, what's going to happen? We don't just say, because of the research that's been done, we don't just say, well, the last lady I looked after did okay. We say, well, of a 150 women who have tried to get pregnant, this number have achieved a pregnancy. And in that number, this is what's happened. And not only can we tell you what's happened, but we can safeguard against some of the potential problems that have been observed by others. Because knowing that that problem is a common problem, we've lent some thought as to how to solve it. And my third and final example of important research is we all think that exercise is good for people with heart disease. It's good for people without heart disease. But we worry that if you overdo it and you've only got a single pump, might, that might be adverse in some ways. So Rachel Cordina, who you'll hear from later on today, did an absolutely astonishing piece of research through the registry resources of comparing upper arm exercise, lower limb exercise, and different kinds of exercise to define exactly what it does to the heart and the whole body, and defines what the best kind of exercise is for someone with a Fontan circulation. And for that, she won the Worldwide Young Investigator Award a couple of years ago at the American Heart Association. So research, it, we ask practical questions. Now, it might be frustrating for you to hear Eve say it might be three or four years from the time you participate to the time the answer comes through. But if the answer is valid and applicable and can be generalised to everyone, it's worth the wait to have done it properly. OK, I'll give you a break and turn on some slides. OK, what do we focus on? Well, you've already heard, but well, let me put it this way. There are now more adults with congenital heart disease in Australia and New Zealand than there are children. I'll say it again because it's such an extraordinary statistic that there are now more adults with congenital heart disease than there are children. Now, paediatric cardiology was established in this country in the mid-1960s. And adult congenital heart disease is a relatively newer specialty, but we know that the demand is growing and so 
we have worked hard to provide the services to keep pace with that demand. What's this? This is a Fontaine circulation at an angiogram. Um, David Winmore showed you these kind of lovely connections and we love slides like that because it looks so good. To us it looks good. Now, the new population is, is a really interesting one. This is a simple diagram. What natural history means is what happens if you allow nature to take its course? That's the natural history and the treated history is obviously, hopefully, a lot better than the natural history. And the gap between those two survival lines is the new population of people who in the 19th century wouldn't have survived, but in the 21st century thrive and survive and we have to look after. And as you can see, that new population is growing because the treatments are getting better as time progresses. So we do what we call this multidisciplinary thing. It's a term you'll hear bandied around a lot. And what does it mean? It means that in every centre that tries to provide care to teenagers and young adults with congenital heart disease, we have to put together a team of people with a whole lot of different skills. So there are plumbers, uh, like me, uh, but then you also need electricians because the heart has a battery and the battery can sometimes go awry in a Fontan circulation. Cyanosis is when the lips look a little bit blue and in the care of people with cyanosis, you need different kinds of specialists. For example, some people who are blue for a long time around the lips get gallstones and you need a good general surgeon who knows how to take out gallstones, for example. We put a lot of time and effort into helping women who are pregnant or want to be pregnant with the Fontan circulation. And we need really good experienced obstetricians, but we also need really careful anaesthetists. So you have to build the team around that. Many, this is a really good news story because it looks like the recurrence risk of congenital heart disease in women with a Fontan is very low, well under 5%. But still, we need to put in place counsellors and geneticists to help people understand that risk because it's a very natural area of concern. And something that will be enormously discussed this afternoon, as you've already heard, is, you know, we think a lot about the heart, but we like to think that we think about the whole person as well, and we need help to do that from people who are well-trained in that. And most adult congenital heart programs are actually run by nurse specialists who provide that whole holistic kind of care. There are also these, what, what I've called psychosocial aspects, things that worry people and that we're concerned to help them with. Getting the job they want, getting insurance if that's what they want, intellectual and social development of kids who have missed a lot of school time perhaps. Many of you won't want to hear that we talk about contraception. That's one of parents, when you leave the room, that's one of the things we talk about. Um, exercise and sports recommendations. Some people, you know, we can't assume that people know what they want to do and we've got to help them decide what's safe and what's good for them. So you know about single pump hearts and you know about the Fontan operation. This is not my last slide even though it says take home messages, you'll be sorry to hear because I'm separating you from morning tea. But these are the important things that most Fontan patients are doing very well. That if a problem develops truly, truly, truly early detection makes it much more likely that the problems are successfully treatable. I know that sounds obvious, but actually translating that into making a 21-year-old who's been at a party the night before turn up for their appointment, not so easy. What are our main medical focuses? And Julian has touched on many of these. They're electrical problems in the heart that present as either palpitations or dizzy spells. Their clots in the heart or other parts of the body, their weak pumps, leaky valves. You'll hear later today, you, might, you must be thinking, what the hell is he talking about liver? Whoever said there's anything wrong with the liver? It turns out that when you've only got one pump, you can sometimes get a buildup of back pressure from the heart into the liver and that can cause a problem. And again, early detection is really important and pregnancy management. So a few words about each of those. Um, hopefully most of you will have never heard of this thing called atrial flutter, but it is a thing that can happen in patients who have got a Fontan circulation. 
sinus rhythm, you must be thinking, what's the sinus has got to do with anything? There's a sinus in the heart as well. Sinus just means a hole. Um, if you're in sinus rhythm, which most of us are in, the heartbeat is nice and regular and at about 70 beats per minute. But if you've got atrial flutter, the heart is still regular but much faster and a single pump heart often doesn't like that very much. So that's an electrical problem we often need to deal with. What do we do if someone's got flutter? Well, sometimes medications work and sometimes we have to do this thing called an ablation procedure where an electrical specialist threads a very special kind of catheter up into the heart, finds out where the electrical short circuit is and gives it a very, very tiny zap and fixes the problem. And that's been an area of incredible developments in the last 10 years. What about blood clots? This, this slide, Many of you will know that we do ultrasounds all the time to look for problems like this. And a blood clot, the blood is black, but if the blood's flowing very slowly, it might clot, and that's what it can look like. And as Julian said, we are very concerned to define the best way to prevent this. Is it aspirin? Is it the stronger blood thinner warfarin? Or are there, a gentleman asked about, newer medications that might replace warfarin? So we look at that very carefully. What about weak pumps or leaky valves? Well, there are medications and we're trying to define which the best ones are, the ones that are safe and effective. And sometimes, uh, you heard a few moments ago about the conversion procedure, sometimes we do an operation to do that. And, and sometimes if things are really bad and we can't do much, we'll give someone a new heart. And that's an option we sometimes have to look at. It seems that whatever goes wrong, we've always got some options. What about liver issues? I won't steal AJ's thunder because he's done some spectacular research on this issue, but it's congestion of blood flow back from the heart. And we do tests like ultrasounds or this nice new test, which is also not invasive at all, no needles, called a fibro scan. And we're trying to understand just because the liver's a little bit congested, is it bad for you? Should we be doing anything about it? And this is an area that, as Julian said, we need more research. You've heard a lot about fenestrations, and it's just a funny Latin way of saying hole in the heart, and sometimes we close those uh, via a, a minor procedure, and sometimes we give stronger blood thinners to try and prevent the consequences. What about pregnancy? Um, usually goes well. It's sometimes, what I mean by conceive is not mentally conceive, I mean the other kind of conceive. It's, it's sometimes hard for women with a Fontaine circulation to fall pregnant. They have more trouble falling pregnant. But once they do, um, there are some concerns that some mums might get palpitations or a bit breathless towards the end of the pregnancy. There are some concerns that some of the babies may not grow quite as fast as in a woman with two pumps rather than one. But these problems are almost all manageable in specialist centres where we share the care with obstetricians and anaesthetists. So what have we learnt by looking after adults with the Fontan circulation. The first is that the number of adults surviving with a Fontan is growing quickly. And that's great news because it means they're surviving and doing well. Now, someone asked the question, why is it Sydney, Melbourne and Auckland? The answer is that those were the cities where cardiac surgical programs were started in the late 60s and early 70s. And so, as Eve said, people from Adelaide and Western Australia would come to the Eastern Seaboard. Everyone from New Zealand goes to Auckland, and that makes sense. There can't be a lot of expert centres everywhere because the expertise is hard to gain, and you need to be doing 50 or 60 operations a year to be good at it. So the expertise is concentrated in those centres. But again, coming back to really what I hope the most important message of all is, is that there are adult congenital heart disease or ACHD centres that are comprehensive and purpose-built for young adults who survive with congenital heart disease. And coming along to those centres, I won't say it's not daunting, it is daunting to make the transition, but hopefully you'll receive a warm welcome of people who are there to support and help. And hopefully you'll come along because by working out what's going wrong early, we can fix it up and hopefully get the longest and best life that can be achievable in the context of the way people were born. Thanks a lot.